Now, in an ideal world when you're anodizing, what you're better off having is one of these uh, benchtop variable power supply units. I would show you mine, but it hasn't arrived yet. I've ordered one. And you can adjust its voltages between 1 and 70 volts. And uh, its ampere is var variable as well. This one I've ordered goes up to 3 amps, which is ample, no pun intended, for what we're actually going to need. And um, like I say, I'd expect this anodizing today to be around 900 milliamps process, somewhere around there. Um, if you don't, if you're on a budget and you can't afford to splash out on one of these variable power supplies, you can just use a, this is what I advise most people in the pen turning world, just get yourself a 12 volt, 2 amp power supply. And uh, you can stick a rear stat or a variable resistor on it just to bring the ampere down a touch so you're not driving the power supply at full blow. Um, to give you an idea of what I mean, just a general plug-in power supply, 12 volt out, 2 amp, perfect for the job. Uh, just literally cut your DC connector off and wire it into your tank. Now, with regards to wiring, what you need is the two plates are your cathodes and your cathodes are your negative. Okay, the part you're anodizing is the positive, the anode, hence why it's called anodizing. Uh, so what we do is we take the positive lead of the power supply And we connect the positive lead to the positive lead of our ammeter. And then the lead coming from the ammeter, we connect to the positive of the pieces we're going to anodize. Well, I say the positive, we connect it to the pieces we're going to anodize. And the negative of the power supply is connected to these two plates. Now, as you can see, I've joined both of these plates together with just a piece of wire. I've cut it crimped it over just to create a contact, just to join these two pieces. I'm going to have a, a flying off lead coming off the copper, copper lead plate, which I can connect to the negative of the power supply by just twisting it together. And uh, there we have it. Okay, so um, you got a gist of what you actually need to anodize. Now, one thing what I haven't mentioned is how you actually make the acid bath up. Now, obviously this is sulfuric acid, and distilled water. It's the only two things in it. You just got to get your mix right. Now, it's not that easy to get hold of pure sulfuric acid, you know, chemistry lab grade stuff. I did. I was lucky. I found a place on the internet what sells it. I'd rather not mention it on a video tutorial on where you can buy this stuff, but a bit of Googling, I'm sure you'll find it. And uh, this is five liters of class eight Pure sulfuric acid, well I say pure, I think it's about 99.8%, it's very strong. And uh, to give you an example, you will only need 200 mil of that stuff in 2 litres of water. So it's a 1 to 10 ratio when you're mixing this stuff down. Um, what you might find easier to get hold of is uh, car battery acid. Um, that's sulfuric acid again, and with that stuff you only have to dilute it 50%. So half and half, half car battery acid and half distilled water and that will give you a decent anodizing mix uh, but like I say if you've got the pure stuff like I've got here only 200 mil to 2 litres of water and that's all you distilled water and that oh, is all you One need. other thing with the acid glasses and chemical rated gloves you don't want this stuff on you uh, obviously it burns half of the time you don't even realise you got it on you because it splashes around and things and when you're mixing your acid tank, um, always add acid. Do not put 200 mil of acid in your tank and then pour the water in it because the water will splash it round and it can react quite violently as well. Um, add your two litres of water and then tip the 200 mil into that water. Okay? Always add acid. Very important. 
When you do this, the chemical reaction will begin to occur and the temperature of the bath will rise a lot. The solution, when you put your hand on the side of the tank, will be hot. Uh, you can't anodize in this, it's too unstable, you've really got to let it cool down. So once you've mixed your acid into your water, leave it in a tank in the garage overnight and the following day it will be nice and it will cool down again and then it's ready to be anodized. If you try and anodize in an electrolyte which is still hot in temperature like that, it will flash. And when I say by flash, you'll end up with pitting on your pieces where the current's too high. It, it's just too powerful of an electrolyte. So let it cool down overnight, come back the following day, perfect for anodizing. You can carry on reusing this, providing you keep the solution clean. As long as you don't start getting other metals in there contaminating it, otherwise you'll end up just flushing it down the toilet. Which you can do with sulfuric acid, by the way. Sulfuric acid is used to unblock drains, so you can dispose of it by flushing it down the toilet. And, uh, yeah, there you go. Okay, so, um, as I showed you earlier, we have a jig. Now, some people want to anodize and they just hang the pieces on a piece of aluminium wire which is bent into a hook and they slide it on. Works fine, sort of. Um, if you're using wire like this, now this is aluminium welding wire, it's not pure aluminium. So, if I was to bend a hook in it and hang the piece onto the hook, it will start anodizing. But what you'll tend to find is because it's got other alloys in it, you'll get like a crustacean build up along this aluminium and it insulates it, stopping the actual piece you've hung on it from actually making contact anymore and it'll stop anodizing prematurely and you'll go and put dyes into it and it will fail because it hasn't anodized long enough and you'll start getting failures left, right and center. So my way, now this is just my personal preference to guarantee I do not get failures through contact is I take the extra time and I turn a jig. Okay, I'm not a believer of hanging it on wire. I just think it's uh, asking for too many recipes to go wrong. And with the time we spend in making our pens, you may as well spend an extra 20 minutes actually turning a proper jig to mount everything on. And what I do is I take a, an old scrap piece of aluminium like this and I turn one end down, which I'm gonna slide the cap onto. And I turn the other end down so I can slide the full body of the pen for you. And you notice you've got a step here. Uh, that's so I can slide the centre band onto it. Uh, I drill a hole in the side of it, which is to the correct diameter of the custom finial. And I can just push that into the hole. A little bit smaller, so it's a tight fit. Like I said, again, I don't want things pulling out. Um, I've drilled a hole in the side here to push this piece of aluminium welding wire straight into and again that's a nice snug fit so I don't have to worry about that falling out. So uh, let's get the parts mounted onto this. We'll get them in the anodizing tank and we'll leave them in there for about an hour. Uh, an hour is plenty of time by the way to get a decent finish of anodizing providing you've got your current right like we were talking about earlier. So um, without further ado, let's get this bit sorted out shall we? And then, last but not least, the lid. So the lid can also push onto the jig and there we have. We have one jig fully assembled of all of the pieces of the pen we're going to be anodizing. Uh, jobs are good now. I can see I've got some residue on there from the latex gloves. Uh, that wouldn't affect the anodizing process but it will contaminate my tank. So what I'm going to do now is just give them a quick dip in the water just to uh, wash off any mildew or residue what I've actually put onto the pieces. So there we go. Like I said, cleanliness is key with anodizing. So uh, way to be thorough. Take a block of wood with a hole through the middle of it. And I thread the welding wire through the hole in the wood. The piece of wood goes across my tank, like so. And I position the piece so it's not touching the actual lead plates, because that would short it out. And again, that would result in a failure. Once you've got the piece suspended in the right place, just literally bend the top over and create a kink. This stops the piece obviously falling through the block of wood, which again, wouldn't be what we want. Now, take a pair of wire cutters and cut off the excess just to get it out of your way. Voila. So as I mentioned earlier, you take the positive, which comes from your ammeter and you connect that to the workpiece. Okay, so there we are, we have one positive attached and we take the negative, like so, and connect it. Okay, so there we are. Uh, that 
positive on, negative on. There we are, we're pulling current. At the moment, we're pulling 0 0.6 amps, 600 milliamps. That will rise, and I, like I said earlier, I bet that gets up to about 900. Uh, it does take a little bit for this process to go and start going. Now what I can see is lots of tiny bubbles rising off the piece. Now that's a good indication that anodizing is actually occurring. Um, it's the surface starting to break up. Now any smuts and dirt which is actually on the piece will start to break away from it as well. Um, not necessarily cleaning the part, this is why we got to clean it earlier, but uh, this is where you'll start seeing scum float to the top of the anodizing tank. Now if you start seeing scum all over the top of the tank you haven't cleaned the part properly. So lesson learned but um, you may as well carry on now because it's a little bit too late to stop. Uh, but uh, yeah, I can see bubbles rising off the lid and I can see bubbles rising off the main piece. I can see them all over the center band and I can see them on the finial. I can also see bubbles all over the cathodes and they're starting to rise to the surface. Now that's actually hydrogen gas uh, which is a byproduct so although you can't see one set up in this video usually is a good idea to have an extractor fan going here you don't really want to be breathing this stuff in too much yes I know I am at the moment but uh, trust me I won't be for long and uh, so there we are yeah the bubbles are starting to rise they're getting faster now so I know this is successfully anodizing so I'm gonna start the timer now and we'll leave this running for about an hour and then the parts will be anodized and we can move on to the next step which is obviously dyeing the pieces. Okay so there we have it it's been anodizing for about an hour now so it's got a nice good coat of anodizing layer on it uh, basically we've just made a big metal sponge uh, this stuff will soak up pretty much anything it touches now so you've got to be a little bit careful with it um, what we're going to do is remove it from the acid bath and we're going to put it straight into a wash tank to get all that acid off it. Um, one thing to notice, oh one thing, stick with deionized or distilled water. There's no impurities in it so it won't affect the finish of your anodized piece. Uh, what we're going to do now is just take this piece out of the acid bath and we're going to put it straight into a tub of um, distilled water just to wash all the acid off it so we can get, then get it ready to put into the dye bath. Uh, more on that in one second. Now, before you lift this out the tank, empty the acid out of it because, think about it, got a tube here, we blocked it one end, what's going to happen when I tip this? Yeah, we don't really want that all over the workshop. Okay, so, now, like I was saying earlier about the crustacean, you see the black mark on the actual aluminium welding rod here. That, if that was just the part hanging on that, that would have broken the contacts and you would have had an incomplete anodized process and uh, you would have been left starting all over again really. You can strip off part anodizing using caustic soda but it's, it's a lot of work because you've got to polish the piece back up again. So what we're going to do is anyway is just uh, wash this acid off. There we are. Nice little clean for the piece. Get all of this acid off it. Now again, we don't want to be touching this piece because it's porous. We haven't sealed this layer yet, so it will soak anything up. And here we have my uh, Sanadai Blue, and this is what we're going to be using for the anodizing process today. So we just uh, remove this lid. Get a little shake to get all of this blue dye off it. Don't really want that everywhere. And uh, what we all find inside here is a heater. That's bubbles. Which uh, this has been on for the past hour while the piece has been anodizing. And um, basically, it's just bringing the temperature up to about 30 degrees centigrade. And that's an ideal temperature for an anodizing uh, dye bath. It, it uh, helps the uh, dye uptake of the actual piece. So. Uh, Nice warm temperature with that. We're just going to lower this part in. 